Hello student, welcome to Akshara's Academy. I'm now going to start with macroeconomics and in your first unit, I'm going to start with circle of law of income. Let's get into the topic. Economics is classified into two. One is microeconomics and macroeconomics. In your 11th standard, you would have studied about microeconomics. Okay, say for example, you study about a particular fruit. That is a micro study, a small study about a particular fruit. Okay, so micro means about an individual, about a consumer you study. That is called microeconomics. Macroeconomics is a detailed study. Say for example, you study about all the fruits. Okay, then it is a macroeconomics and it takes into account the totality of everything. Okay, so that is that totality is called the aggregate. Okay, for example, microeconomics uh, you study demand and supply and at the macroeconomics you study national income and general price level. These are some examples. Okay. Let's now understand the concept of income generation in an economy. How it takes place. Okay. See, there are firms of producers in an economy. What is their work? They carry out business in order to produce the goods or services. Okay. So how do they produce these goods or services? They produce with the help of factors of production. What are these factors of production? There are four factors of production which help the firms or producers to produce their goods or services. Let's see what are those four factors of production. First is land. Next is labor. Next is capital. And the other is enterprise. Now let's understand how these four factors help the firms or producers to produce the product. See, these producers they have the manufacturing unit over a land. Okay. Next, labor. They need people in order to produce the products. Okay. Next is capital. The producers or the owners, they invest capital into their business so, uh, so as to carry out the business. Okay. Without money, they cannot run the business. Next is enterprise. In order to manage everything, they need a management. Okay. They need an organization to carry out the work. So, these four factors of production are very important in order to produce the products or services for a firm or a producer. So with the help of these factors of production, the firm or producers, they are producing the goods and services. Okay. Now for the factors of production, the firm or the producer needs to pay money, right? They need, they need to pay them. Okay. How do they pay? For the land, they pay rent. Okay. Next is for the labor, they pay wages or salaries. And next for the capital which is invested by the owner, the firm pays an interest on capital to them. Next is the enterprise. For the enterprise, it earns profit. Okay. So who supply this land, labor, capital and enterprise? This is supplied by the households. Who are households? People like you and me are the households. Okay. We supply, we go for work. Okay. We are the laborers. Okay, so we may give land. So we are the households who are giving them these factors of production. Okay, now let's see what happens next. Now the firms have produced the goods and services. Now who is going to purchase these goods or services? It is going to be bought by the households. We are again going to buy these goods or services. We are getting the income from the firms and when the income comes in our hand, we spend it again on these goods and services which are produced by these firms or producers. Okay, so we pay them for the goods and services. Again, the money goes back, uh, goes back to the uh, firms or producers. Again, what happens? The firms or producers, they are going to produce the goods with the help of these factors of production and in return, they will pay the factors of production. Again, that uh, uh, factor fa income is going to come to the households and again the households are going to purchase. This is the circular flow of money. Okay, this is how gen income is generated in an economy. Hope you understood this. The households are helping the firms to produce the products or services by supplying the factors of production. So the four factors of production are the land, labor, capital and enterprise okay so the firms they are utilizing these factors of production in order to produce the products okay in return the firms are paying these factors of production so for the land they pay rent 
for the labor they pay wages or salaries for the capital they give interest and for the enterprise they give profit okay now see this rent wages or salaries interest and profit it's an income for the household because these factors of production are supplied by the household so it is an income to the household and that is called the factor income through these factors they are earning income and so it is called as factor income for the household for the firms for these factors they are paying money so it is called factor payment hope you could understand what is factor income and what is factor payment for the household it is factor income for the firms it is factor payment now let's see the sectors in an economy there are four sectors in an economy those are the household sector firms government sector and the foreign sector let's now see the functions of each sector let's begin with household sector the household sector are the consumers or the owners okay they purchase the products or services which are manufactured by the firms they also supply the factors of production for which they receive the factor income next coming to the firms firms are the producers or the sellers they produce the products and services and also sell those products and services and next they hire the factors of production for which they pay the factor payment next coming to the government sector government sector is for the welfare of the society they maintain law and order in the society and also they produce goods and services under the public sector next is the foreign sector where the export and imports of goods and services takes place and because of this there is a flow of capital between countries so these are the sectors in an economy now understand the concept of phases of circular flow phases is nothing but the stages of how this circular flow happens the first phase is the production phase or the generation of income phase see the firms are utilizing or hiring the factors of production in order to produce the goods and services in return the firm pays the factors of production so income is generated to the factors of production again the income is being distributed to the uh, factors of production the factors of production are supplied by the households so it is a factor income for the households now the households they have received the factor income next they are going to spend this income okay so the next stage is the expenditure phase where they dispose this income so the households they are going to make expenditure how do they make this expenditure they are again going to use this uh, that is dispose this income in order to purchase the products and services which are being produced by the firms again the firms they will start producing the products and again the money will flow it will generate to the households and again from the households it reaches the firms okay so this is how the circular flow happens now let's see circular flow and types of flow in a simple economy a simple economy is where there will be two or three sectors here we assume that there are only two sectors one is the household and other is the firm the households are supplying factors of production to the firms the firms are hiring these factors of production in order to produce their goods and services in return the firms are making factor payments to the households the households are receiving these factor payments which is the income that is known as the factor income okay the households now start spending this income how do they spend it they make a consumption expenditure consumption expenditure is they start purchasing the goods and services which are produced by the firms okay in return the firms are supplying them with the goods and services this is a circular flow in a simple economy now i mark factors of production as one factor payment as two goods and services as three and consumption expenditure as four so one is equal to three which is which means there is a real flow so one means the factors of production and three is the goods as, goods and services so there is a physical flow of goods and services here so it is a real flow and two is equal to four which is which means factor payments is equal to consumption expenditure there is a money flow so we call it as a uh, money flow and uh, these are the two types of flow one is the money flow and the real flow let's now see the difference between real flow and money flow on the basis of meaning real flow means flow of goods in an economy between firms and households and money flow means flow of money in between households and firms 
next kind of exchange under real flow exchange of goods and services takes place under money flow everything is exchanged against money next difficulty in exchange under real flow there may be difficulties due to barter system it's like a barter system so it there may be difficulties in exchange of goods and services under money flow each and every uh, thing has a value so money is paid out so there is no such difficulty in exchange and next alternative name real flow is also known as physical flow and money flow is known as nominal flow let's now understand the concept of stock and flow stock is a variable which is measured at a particular point of time for example i say quantity of wheat stored on 31 12 2021 20, is this much okay on a particular date what amount of quantity of wheat has been stored okay that is called stock and again another example is population of india as on 31st march 2022 as on that date how much of population were in india so this is stock so on a particular point of time something is measured that is called stock next let's see what's a flow a flow is a variable which is measured over a period of time okay so for example number of cars manufactured in 2021 so how many cars were manufactured during the year 2021 2021 is a period of time it does not talk about a particular date it says during the year 2021 how many cars were manufactured so that is a flow again for example quantity of wheat produced in 2021 so during the year 2021 how much of wheat has been produced in the previous example we saw how much quantity of wheat has been stored on a particular date it does not specify any particular date it specifies a period of time so that is called a flow now let's see the difference between stock and flow on the basis of meaning stock means it's a variable which is measured at a particular point of time flow means it's a variable which is measured over a period of time next the time dimension stock has no time dimension okay it specifies a particular date okay it does not have any time dimension whereas flow it is measured over a period of time say for example during the year okay so or during the month so over a period of time it's measured next nature stock is static concept it does not change okay on a particular date this much of quantity alone is available so it is fixed so it will not change so it is a static concept whereas flow is a dynamic concept where during the year or during the month everything can change so it's a dynamic concept so this is the difference between stock and flow hope you would have understood the complete concept of circular flow of income stay tuned thank you